You might be well-traveled, but Antarctica is one place most people will never have the chance to visit. This southernmost continent is virtually uninhabited, not to mention cold. But are there other reasons not to visit besides the frigid temperatures and lack of infrastructure? Possibly. From bacteria to sea spiders, here are 20 scariest things found in Antarctica. Number 20. A Huge Hole with all this talk of global warming and climate change, it's definitely concerning when you learn about a massive hole appearing in the Antarctic ice. Is the ice disappearing so quickly that the heat's just making giant holes everywhere? That might have been what people thought when they learned about our scientists' terrifying new discovery hidden under Antarctica's ice. Researchers noticed a substantial 3,700 square mile hole in the Lazarus Sea, which they described as Maudrai's Polynia. The hole had grown to over 30,000 square miles within six weeks of being identified. Uh, to put that into perspective, that's about the same size as Kansas. Researchers described the hole as a patch of unfrozen ocean surrounded by ice, and it's not the first time that it's been identified. The hole was first recorded in 1974, but it hadn't been observed in about 40 years, and certainly not in winter when the ice is at its thickest. At first, scientists were confused and unsure about what had created the hole, but New York University scientists finally got to the bottom of it. They used high-resolution data and satellite observations to identify the conditions leading to the hole and found that cyclones were to blame. Strong wind and cyclones resulted in the ice being carried away from the area. As they were comparable to Category 11 cyclones, surface winds had dragged the ice to the left while the cyclonic winds carried them away in the opposite direction. This caused an opening in the ice field. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. Blood Falls Seeing blood in the snow can lead to a sickening feeling in your stomach. You know someone or something has been injured, or worse, killed. And that's probably what people thought when they discovered the Blood Falls in McMurdo Dry Valley's Antarctica for the first time. In 1911, scientists noticed that a part of a cliff in Antarctica looked different from the rest. Rather than being a pristine shade of white, it was dark red and there didn't look to be any apparent reason for it. Some people thought algae might be to blame, but there wasn't any evidence to suggest that and later studies in the Journal of Glaciology disproved that theory. So why was the snow bleeding? Well, according to a team of scientists, blood falls pours in from Taylor Glacier, with the liquid bubbling up from the glacier surface. After gathering imaging from underneath the glacier, the scientists determined that there was a network of subglacial rivers and a lake filled with iron-rich brine. This gave the blood falls its dark red color and also explained why it never froze. As a result, it's known as the coldest glacier on Earth, with water that constantly flows. Number 18. Abandoned Huts Robert Falcon Scott and Ernest Shackleton weren't only some of the coolest named people in history, they were also Antarctic explorers. Sir Ernest Shackleton led three British expeditions to the Antarctic, while Robert Falcon Scott led two. Sadly, Robert and his party of five died on the second expedition. And even though their expeditions happened over a century ago, we won't be in a hurry to forget how they pulled off such monumental feats, because their abandoned huts remain in Antarctica. Robert's hut was a prefabricated wooden cabin with seaweed insulation on the north shore of Cape Evans. There were also various outbuildings and scientific equipment for measuring the climate. The cabin is essentially a time capsule now, with various expedition supplies perfectly preserved in the cold temperatures, including biological samples, a crate of emperor penguin eggs, and food supplies. Ernest Shackleton's hut is also well preserved in Antarctica, located about 20 miles from Hut Point. It took about three weeks for his prefabricated hut to be built, then he also created a stable for his ponies and hauled tons of supplies to the Antarctic shores. This hut looks exactly how it did when Ernest left it for the last time, including laundry hanging on the line, food on the shelves, and cooking supplies. You might never get to visit Robert and Ernest's huts, but Google is letting you explore them. They have stitched together photos of the huts so that you can navigate them as if you were truly there in person. Number 17. Bacteria 
We've had more than our fair share of contagious diseases in recent years, so it's pretty troubling to learn that Antarctica might be harboring some pretty dangerous bacteria. Let's hope it doesn't make its way to us. In 2022, scientists discovered bacteria in Antarctica that contain genes making it naturally antibiotic and antimicrobial resistant. This meant the bacteria had the potential to spread out of polar regions. One researcher said that the bacteria had evolved to resist the extreme conditions and could easily be transferred to other bacteria. And as we know, parts of Antarctica are experiencing melting ice, and this ice plays host to a wide range of bacteria. Some of them are potential sources of antibiotic resistance, leading researchers to think that climate change might impact how often we see infectious diseases. Interestingly, before these specific bacteria were found, scientists were confident that no horror contagions would be released from the ice, putting our populations at risk. It kind of seems like that might not be the case anymore. Number 16. A Pyramid it sometimes seems like whenever we spot something unusual in a photo, our first thought is that it must be alien life. So when a pyramid-shaped mountain was spotted in Antarctica, conspiracy theorists were quick to suggest it was a human-made structure and people or aliens must have lived there thousands of years ago, or something like that. Uh, interestingly, news agencies ran with the story about the pyramid, unintentionally convincing people that it was, in fact, a pyramid. But of course, it wasn't. It's a 4,150-foot mountain in the southern part of the Ellsworth Mountains and got its shape from freeze thaw erosion. Freeze thaw erosion occurs when water or snow fills up the cracks of a mountain during the highest temperatures of the day, only to expand and turn into ice when those temperatures drop in the evening. The expanding ice then causes those cracks to grow, and where the freeze thaw process happens countless times, whole rock sections can eventually break off. As three of the four sides of the mountain appear to be eroding at the same rate, it also seems as if the rock type is consistent all the way around and that it's all one rock layer. And as for the theory about how the pyramid mountain is newly discovered, it's not. It's one of many peaks of the Ellsworth Mountains that American aviator Lincoln Ellsworth found during a 1935 flight. So as pyramid-like and spooky as it looks, there's really nothing all that interesting about this mountain. Number 15. Lake Vostok You'd be forgiven for not knowing too much about Lake Vostok. It's not like you can load up the family into the car and go see it. This lake is one of the largest subglacial lakes in the world and is buried under about two and a half miles of ice. It has also been covered in ice for at least 15 million years, or up to 25 million years. Lake Vostok is a deep, dark, and mysterious lake that has been cut off from the atmosphere and light for such a long time that it's described as one of Earth's most extreme environments. And if you thought Lake Ontario was large, Lake Vostok is just as big. It's about 149 miles long by 31 miles wide and at least half a mile deep in some sections. So how did we discover a lake when it's been covered with ice for such a long time? A Russian geographer and pilot wondered whether he'd stumbled across a lake in the 1960s while flying overhead. He saw a smooth patch of ice, and the idea was put into many people's heads. However, it wasn't actually confirmed until 1993, when scientists using satellite-based radar surveyed the area and confirmed it. Biologist Brent Christner said it was one of the easiest subglacial lakes to detect because of how big it was, but that it's also one that has many secrets. They think its only water supply is meltwater from the ice sheet above it, and they can't find evidence of an influx or efflux of water. Number 14. ALH 84001 Meteorite ALH 84001 is a meteorite from Mars that was recovered in Antarctica in 1984 in the Allen Hills ice field. The 4.2-pound igneous rock supposedly crystallized from magma 4.5 billion years ago on Mars and was blasted from the red planet to Earth about 13,000 years ago. It was shaped like a rounded brick and measured about 6 inches by 4 inches by 3 inches. It looked like it had been dipped in tar because it was partially covered in fusion crust, which looked like black glass. But on the inside, it looked like a unique shade of green to gray. Interestingly, NASA carried out a chemical and microscopic analysis of the meteorite in 1996 and suggested that Martian microorganisms had produced carbonates in the meteorite. These carbonate grains contain iron materials similar to those that bacteria produce and objects that resemble microscopic fossils. Some scientists argued that the evidence could be explained non-biologically and that Martian microorganisms weren't necessarily involved. However, many people see this meteorite as proof 
proof that Mars was once hospitable to life. But how do they even know that it came from Mars in the first place? Well, this meteorite is one of nearly a dozen that experts believe came from Mars based on their composition. They contain traces of gas like what's found on Mars, which isn't known to be present anywhere else. Number 13. Endurance when Ernest Shackleton was on an Antarctic expedition with a team in 1915, he encountered trouble. They were just 100 miles from their destination when their ship, the Endurance, became stuck in the thick ice of the Weddell Sea. They tried several times to free themselves and spent eight months on board the vessel, hoping their luck would change. Sadly, their situation would only get worse as the colder weather approached. Eventually, the ship succumbed to the ice's pressure and sank. Ernest and his team then had to escape in small boats and on foot, and the ship was never seen again. Well, that was the story up until early 2022, anyway. After over a century, the Endurance was finally found 10,000 feet below the surface of the Weddell Sea and was in remarkable condition. Even though the timber of the boat appeared slightly disrupted, as you would expect when it's been in water for over a hundred years, it looked almost like it did before it sank. Even its name was visible on the stern. The ship was found only about four miles from its last recorded location by the Falklands Maritime Heritage Trust using remotely operated submersions. They spent two weeks combing a search area before finally discovering the ship on the 100th anniversary of Ernest Shackleton's funeral. Number 12. Sea Spiders because millions of spiders on land aren't terrifying enough, our oceans also have to be full of them. Not just little spiders either, massive ones. Our oceans are actually filled with sea spiders, and most of them are so small that they're no larger than your fingernail. But if you were to take a trip to Antarctica, it's like the sea spiders there are on steroids. They are so massive that if you were to hold one, their long, spindly legs would dangle over the edges of your hand. That's a horrifying thought. Experts think that sea spiders in the Antarctic got so large because the Southern Ocean got much cooler about 30 million years ago. It's called polar gigantism, and it's when cold-dwelling invertebrates grow much larger than others in warmer environments in order to survive. But scientists were concerned about sea spiders. What would happen to them if the waters they live in continue to get warmer? Won't they just die? Well, maybe not. Researchers collected the giant sea spiders and exercised them in water by making them flip over. They wanted to increase the temperatures and decrease oxygen to see whether they would just give up. Instead of being unable to survive in the warmer environment, the spiders did just fine. Scientists discovered that their skin was like Swiss cheese, helping them absorb oxygen to fuel their bodies. So now they're pretty confident that the giant sea spiders won't be the first creatures to disappear in warmer waters. I don't know whether to be happy or disappointed. Number 11. Striped Icebergs when you picture an iceberg, you imagine a great big white chunk of ice. But what if I were to tell you that some look like candy? Yeah, striped icebergs are actually a thing, and they'll blow your mind. Icebergs typically get their white coloring from tiny bubbles trapped in the ice that scatter light in all directions. But they might also have blue stripes if crevices in that ice fill up with meltwater and freeze so fast that bubbles don't have a chance to form. But blue isn't the only color you'll sometimes spot in icebergs. Once an iceberg falls into the sea, a seawater layer can freeze to the underside. If this layer happens to have lots of algae in it, it can form a green stripe on the iceberg. As the ice sheets make their way downhill towards the sea, they might also pick up coloring from sediment, so the end result can be a beautifully stripy berg with blue, green, black, yellow, and brown. While most of the icebergs around Antarctica are white, it's now not uncommon to find a variety of colored ones that can't help but grab your attention. Number 10. Sea Pigs Antarctic sea pigs are sea cucumbers or scotoplanes that look like, well, land pigs. They kind of look like pink water balloons filled with reproductive organs and intestines, and they have little rings of tentacles around their mouths that they use to eat from the sea floor. If you look at them side on, they do kind of look like the pink pigs we have here on land. But these Antarctic sea pigs are not found on land. They are found on the sea floors of the Ross Sea and have managed to establish themselves in the deepest parts of the ocean around Antarctica. To say sea pigs are weird is an understatement. They grow up to about six inches long and have enlarged tube feet with water cavities within their skin. These inflate and deflate, helping their appendages to move. Sea pigs tend to navigate the top layers of the sediment on the sea floor, feeding as they go. They also know how to swim freely with their frontal lobe and two anal lobes, which propel them through the water, and they tend to do this when they've been disturbed. Number 9. 
Dinosaurs. Sauropods are long-necked, long-tailed dinosaurs with small heads and four pillar-like legs that used to roam on every continent except for Antarctica. Well, that's what we thought until a single sauropod vertebra was found in Antarctica on James Ross Island in 2011. According to paleontologist Ariana Kerabahal, sauropods were found all over the world but never in Antarctica. But we now know that they lived in Antarctica about 100 million years ago during the Upper Cretaceous period. They aren't the first to find dinosaurs bones in Antarctica, though. An ankylosaur bone was found in the late 1980s, among a few others. Ariana said quite a few dinosaurs probably did live in Antarctica, but they haven't been able to find many fossils due to how challenging it is to go to Antarctica and how hard it is to find fossils. She said even in the summer, when the ice and snow retreat in coastal areas, the fossil finding process is challenging and discovering a complete bone is next to impossible. This is because there are daily freezing and thawing cycles, which break the bones into pieces. Then, after digging about 8 inches into the ground, you come across permafrost, which is too hard to excavate unless you wait a couple days after uncovering the top layer. Number 8. Elongated Skulls in 2016, mainstream media started discussing a story that broke about elongated skulls being found in Antarctica. According to reports, Smithsonian Institute of New York archaeologist Damian Waters found human remains in La Paya, Antarctica, including elongated skulls. They were described as the first human remains found in Antarctica before people started saying that they were the first remains of aliens found on Earth. According to Damian, they couldn't believe what they had found, and it redefined their view of humanity's history as a whole. Previous Previously, elongated skulls had allegedly been found in Egypt, Peru, and other parts of the world with ancient historical pasts. Many conspiracy theorists said that the skulls were, in fact, from aliens, while others said that ancient civilizations used to extend the length of the skull by manipulating it from an early age. The latter is probably more likely than the former. Although, if you struggle to believe that such skulls were found in Antarctica, then, well, you might be right. Many people think the breaking news was nothing more than a hoax. First of all, no one could find any mention of an archaeologist called Damien Waters from the Smithsonian Institute of New York anywhere else except in that article. They also don't believe that some of the quotes he allegedly made sound anything like what a scientist or a researcher would say. Then there's the region where the skull was allegedly found. La Paya Antarctica has no such region, and Paya means straw in French. Number 7. Dry Valleys we are led to believe that Earth and Mars are vastly different places with very different environments, but the Dry Valleys region, spanning about 1,850 square miles in Antarctica, is one of the most extreme deserts in the world. It's so similar to Mars with its low temperatures, salt accumulation, and limited rainfall that it's been used to test equipment meant for the Red Planet. The Dry Valleys are, as the name suggests, dry. They are positioned in the Transantarctic Mountain Range, and this range forces airflow upward, causing the valleys to lose their moisture, as they're also in a precipitation shadow. They don't receive any snow or rainfall. The only ice found in the dry valleys is alpine glaciers and lake ice. The mountain range also stops ice from flowing down into the valleys from the East Antarctic ice sheet, and strong 200 mile per hour winds cause low humidity. It doesn't get much more desert-like than that, but it's certainly not warm like other deserts. The mean annual temperature in the dry valleys is between 6.8 and negative 22 degrees Fahrenheit, so not exactly shorts and t-shirt weather. Number 6. Old Whiskey Ernest Shackleton was well known for his awesome name and for his three Antarctic expeditions, but he died of a heart attack while preparing for his final one. In 2019, archaeologists found something exciting underneath the floorboards of the hut he used as his base camp during his second expedition, known as the Nimrod Expedition of 1907 to 1909. Tucked away in a box were several bottles of Scotch whiskey called McKinley Scotch that had been bottled in 1898 after 15 years of aging. As it's been over a hundred years since that expedition, it has clearly aged a lot more since then. The bottles were found with two cases of brandy and three cases of scotch, which were left at Cape Royds. He had obviously been forced to leave them behind. Conservationists found them frozen, but the bottles were still intact, and some liquid was still sloshing around inside when shaken. The alcohol content of the whiskey must have been so high that even in negative 22 degree Fahrenheit temperatures, it still wouldn't completely freeze. As they were worried about damaging the contents, researchers left the cates encased in 
place for a few more years until they could bring the best removal tools. They then let the bottles defrost slowly over a two-week period to prevent any damage. Interestingly, this scotch recipe has been lost for a long time, so the parent company chartered a private plane so a bottle could be brought to Christchurch, New Zealand, and then to Scotland for analysis. They hoped that if they could thoroughly analyze it, the whiskey might be able to be recreated, and it seems they were successful, as you can now purchase replicas of it for about 150 bucks. Number 5. Ice Fish Colony Researchers kind of thought they had a pretty good understanding of deep sea ecosystems, but as it turns out, they're not as desert wasteland like as we might have believed. In early 2022, researchers exploring the seabeds of Antarctica in the Weddell Sea found 60 million active ice fish nests. The previous largest number they had found was a mere 60. They had been collecting routine data about eight feet above the sea floor when they stumbled across the find. They spent about four hours diving and saw nothing but fish nest after fish nest. The ecosystem of ice fish nests span about 160 miles, making the researchers think this colony influences the entire Weddell Sea ecosystem. They think seals eat the fish, and if you lose the fish nests, you lose the seals. Researchers were initially drawn to the area because of upwelling, which describes winds and currents causing cold water to be brought to the surface and making the water in that area warmer than surrounding parts. But they definitely found more than they bargained for. They think the fish might prefer that area because they seek out warmer water when it's time to reproduce. Number 4. Past Rainforests when you see how snowy and icy Antarctica is today, it's hard to believe it ever looked any different, but it did. West Antarctica used to be a temperate rainforest, at least according to the pollen, spores, and fossil roots researchers have recently found there. About 90 million years ago, when dinosaurs still walked the Earth, sea levels were about 558 feet higher than they are now, and the sea surface temperatures in the tropics could be up to 95 degrees Fahrenheit. Basically, the rainforest areas of New Zealand look very similar to what might have been in Antarctica all those years ago. Researchers found the remains of a rainforest under ice near Pine Island Glacier in the west of Antarctica in 2017, and they knew they had stumbled across something incredible. When they saw the sediment core, the layer that formed about 90 million years ago was a different color from all the others. When they put the core into a CT scanner, they saw a network of roots throughout a soil layer with ancient remains of flowering plants, pollen, and spores. After they analyzed the pollen, they were able to reconstruct the climate and vegetation, providing us with proof to say that Antarctica was very much like New Zealand is now. Number 3. Cosmic Particles it could be very frustrating for physicists when things don't fit in with what they know about physics. So when the University of Hawaii at Manoa physics professor Peter Gorham and his team found evidence to suggest particles in the Antarctic that don't fit in with what they know about the world of physics, they were eager to learn more. A stratospheric balloon payload called ANITA flew over the Antarctic to identify cosmic ray air showers through radio wave signals. During routine flights in 2006 and 2014, ANITA detected high-energy particles erupting from the ice that resembled upside-down cosmic ray showers. According to Peter, what they saw looked like a cosmic ray as it would appear if reflected off an ice sheet, but it wasn't reflected. It looked as though the cosmic ray had come out of the ice. They published a paper on their findings, and it went against everything they knew about cosmic ray air showers. Number 2. A Hidden German Base Many conspiracy theories were thrown around about Germany and Adolf Hitler during and after World War II. One that's sort of lingered for years is the idea that the Nazis created a secret base in Antarctica. No evidence has ever been found to support this theory, and it likely never happened. But you can kind of see what led people to draw this conclusion. In the 1930s, the Nazis started showing an interest in Antarctica to claim part of it for Germany. So they sent an expedition to survey it from 1938 to 1939 on the ship MS Schwabenland. They wanted to claim Dronning Mound land to protect their whaling industry, but it turns out that Norway had explored it previously and officially claimed it for themselves in 1939 after the Germans set sail. But that wasn't the end of it. Two months after Germany surrendered at the end of the war, a German U-boat arrived near Buenos Aires, and rumors spread that Hitler, Martin Bormann, Eva Braun, and others had used the U-boat to reach the coast of Antarctica. Two years later, someone published a book with theories that Hitler was alive and that two U-boats had taken fleeing Nazis and Hitler to Antarctica along with Nazi treasure. Number 1. Headless Chicken Monster 
Is it a chicken? Is it a monster? No, it's a headless chicken monster. Well, it's actually a swimming sea cucumber, but you'd be forgiven for thinking it's some kind of decapitated chicken. This strange red and pink creature was spotted swimming in the Southern Ocean near Antarctica, where it has never been seen before. Video footage was captured of the sea cucumber drifting through the water with a translucent body, stubby looking wings, and plump breasts. If you only captured a quick glance, you'd almost think it was a chicken ready to be roasted in the oven. Up until it was spotted near Antarctica, the sea cucumber had only previously been seen in the Gulf of Mexico. However, researchers used new camera technology to find it 9,800 feet below sea level in the Southern Ocean. Even if you were planning a trip to the southernmost continent of Antarctica, you might now be changing your mind. There are so many weird things going on there that it's hard not to be a bit spooked. If you had the opportunity to travel to Antarctica, would you go and why? Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time.